You have no time to waste, my friends. Like a thief in the night, your life will be taken. If that doesn't get you thinking, this story I'm going to share with you will. This happened to a uh, one of the members of our community here at Heritage Wealth Planning. A lady who we uh, <laughs> had, some, had some major disagreements with, but uh, I've come to know and enjoy her. And, uh, and I consider her my friend. And uh, I, you know, we'll read the article and... Uh, <laughs> And we'll share some thoughts that she had emailed me and she allowed me to uh <clears throat> to share this there is no time to waste like a thief in the night so let's read this whole let me let the dogs out this is dateline i think of july 5th um july 8th is the article but it happened on july 5th carmel woman has no complaints after fire explosion rips through her home the sound of explosion is carmel indiana by the way the sound of explosions could be heard frequently throughout the long 4th of July weekend in Carmel as residents celebrate the holiday. But one unexpected blast caused extensive damage to a home, uh, to a house and home place, wherever that is, and left its owner with second degree burns. Jennifer Clark, who's the person who uh, we know, uh, smelled smoke on July 5th coming from the front bedroom of her home on Santa Anita Court in the Lexington Farms neighborhood. As she went to investigate, an explosion threw her across the room. Everything there is to do wrong, I did, which is to open a door into a smoky environment, which caused an explosion because I fed it oxygen. That flame blew up in my face and blew me back. I got second-degree burns on about 30% of my body. Now, uh, Jen did send me a picture. I'm not going to show it with you. It's, uh, it was bad. It was bad. But, we'll, again, I'll go into it. And uh, It's bad because it looks it's, it's horrible 30 degree burns on her face and that's uh, thankfully that's not the uh it, it, she says she won't eat skin grafts and stuff and the the crazy thing is you know, jen is a, a very attractive lady uh, i think she's what 55 56 some of like that very attractive woman and um and so she's single all right she uh, uh she's a fighter man this lady um it's just funny because uh yeah, look man i <laughs> There's two sides to every story, I get it, but when you're, I don't want to get too deep in it, but she's just a fighter. That's all there is to it. And um, and it's, uh, when you've had a hard, a tough life as a scrapper, and you think you're kind of getting, you know, on the other side of it, you know, you climbed up that mountain one thick freaking thing after another, and you're climbing up and climbing up, and all of a sudden, boom, literally an explosion happens, and it rips 30, but... 30% of your, you know, her, her major stuff is on her uh, legs and arms, she said, but on her face, it's, uh, it, it's not good. It looks bad. And I uh, just, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> how do you deal with that? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, doctors told her uh, that her burns will heal, but the news was not so good for one of her four dogs and she loves dogs. Uh, she initially got her two beagles and two chihuahuas out of the house, but one of them, a five-year-old beagle named Chloe, ran back inside after another dog got loose and Chloe was later found dead inside. Isn't that crazy? Chloe chase, I mean, did she chase, did Chloe chase the dog to rescue it or did she chase the dog, wonder what the dog was doing? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but let's just think about it. Chloe's like, Oh wait, there goes Pablo. I'm going to chase Pablo either see what he's doing or to say, Hey, come back. I don't know, but just tragic, man. Horrible. She had a happy life, a wonderful life, up until the last five minutes, and then she passed. That's the way I'll have to look at it, yeah. But thankfully, the other dogs were uninjured. All right, Clark, who has owned the house since it was nearly built, uh, built nearly 30 years ago, said it appears it's a total loss. She has been staying with a friend since the blast and plans to relocate to a rental house this weekend until she can move back to her longtime home, whether it's repaired or rebuilt. She loves the neighborhood. It's the place on the pond, and the fact I back up to Central Park, I do want to go back. I don't harbor any ill feelings for going back. Uh, she would like to work with a Carmel Fire Department to educate the community about fire safety. Uh, she's encouraging others to conduct fire drills with the families and practice what to do in emergency. She's grateful for the fire department. It could have been uh, so much worse if I. Uh, it could have been much worse if I had knocked out with a. If I had been knocked out with a blast when the fire hit me, maybe I would have made it. Uh, my burns are extensive, but superficial, and they will heal. I have great insurance. It's a wonderful community. My only sadness is losing my dog. That's it. All right. So uh, I'm going to share with you some of her thoughts here. Um, 
Uh, she goes, I'm healing and grateful to God. Romans 8.28 sustains me. So let's take a look at what Romans 8.28 is, shall we? And we're going to move Pablo here for just a second. Take our well-worn book here that I've had for many moons. Remember, Romans is written by, who knows, who knows? Put it in the show notes if you know who it's written by. And we know it's going to be in the New Testament. And the New Testament, the first four books are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then you have the book of Acts, and then you go to Romans, if memory serves. And uh, yes, and uh, book, just Acts 8 is one of my favorite passages. But let's look at Romans 8, 28, and see what we say. And I wish I had my reading glasses here, because this thing is awful small. Let me go get my reading glasses. Uh, much better, actually, with the reading specs. All right, 8, 28 is... And as we know, then all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, not your purpose, my friends. That's fantastic. All right, so then Jen says, uh, 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 so she asked me, she goes, uh, and she, again, she's, she's grateful to, to the Lord. Um, that's, that's, that's the only way to be. And then she goes, I wonder if you had any thoughts on people who are having extreme circumstances right about the time they're wrapping up their primary care. The gut instinct is to immediately rebuild, but maybe I should do com something completely different. And she uses State Farm, and they've been wonderful, and she does have da -da 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 -da, replacement coverage. Make sure you have it. For the love of the good Lord, make sure you have replacement coverage on your homeowners. Um, it'll take one to two years to play out and get my life back on track. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see. God has sent me so many blessings. I really can't be sad. It's just a shock. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity to start fresh, and I needed that. Anyway, um, so a couple things just jump out at me here is that... Uh, I, a, we, <laughs> the level of intestinal fortitude of old Jen here is, uh, is amazing. It's something that we can all grasp onto and say, if she can do it, why can't we? And, and look, there's no benefit. Hey, there's no one there, buddy. And Jen won't mind the barking of Pablo. This is one of the benefits of, uh, of learning about other people's cultures and backgrounds and stuff is because you realize you're like, what am I griping about? I've always said, you know, three hots and a cot. What am I griping about? You know what I'm saying? And you see other people just, I don't know. That's the thing. It's like when you see the, what other people are going through and how they have the, uh, the ability to withstand, you, you just got to say to yourself, what, what, what are you doing? Now, with that said, if you're depressed, it's okay. I mean, look, I've just, look I don't know what depression is like. I don't know. But I do know when people say, why are you, not to me, but I know that depressed people, they don't want to hear somebody say, there's no reason for you to be depressed. You have all this. That makes it worse, man. To say to a depressed person who has, there's no reason in his brain why he's feel or she's feeling this way. It's not logical. It doesn't matter. That's the way she or he feels. And to say, hey, shape up, snap out of it. You got a great life. That only hurts it. That only hurts him because he doesn't want to feel this way. He doesn't want to be depressed, but he just doesn't know why. There's some chemical imbalance in there. I, I, I wish people would understand that depression isn't something I just say, yeah, I'm just depressed. It's not, I mean, look, are there people that abuse it? Absolutely. But it's not like that. People don't wake up, I want to be depressed and say, yes, I have a freaking 3,000 foot square foot home with two beautiful dogs, a pool, a beautiful wife, and I'm still just, I can't get out of bed. That's not how people are, they're not wired like that. So something has gone wrong in the wiring. Don't sit there and say, what are you depressed, man? The Patriots won the Super Bowl. Your wife is hot and you got two dogs. No, that doesn't do any good. It hurts because you're like, I know, that makes it worse. And also too, when people lose people, don't go up there and say, well, at least they're in heaven now. Just I tell you, I was reading this. I forgot who it was that had written this. Goes, no one wants to hear that. They just want to be consoled. You know, hey, I'm here. And hug them and be quiet. Let the person who's suffering speak first. Oh, I, I, well, at least they're in a better place. That, no, that doesn't solve the initial loss. Your dog's in a better, I don't even care if it's a dog or a person. That, no, don't do that. For the love of all that is good. Stop with this. They're in a better place. Well, it's maybe it's no, no, no. Just hug. 
I'm sorry for you. I'm praying for you. Anything I can do and just be quiet. I can't remember. There's a guy who wrote a, a pastor. I'm, I have his, his head on my, uh, his name on my, oh man, who had written a book a long time ago, like 1930s. I got it on my head too, that guy's name. And I said, man, that's so classy. He goes, because he was a pastor. And he remembered going these, you know, because he, you know, did the funerals and stuff, whatever. And all these people coming up. When he, maybe he lost his wife. I think is what it was. I got that guy's name on the top of my head, top of my tongue. Anyway, I think maybe his wife died. I can't remember. And all these people coming up to him like, she's in a better place. But, and he's like, dude, that didn't do that good. Anyway, so let's go back to Jen here. All right. So here's a scrapper. All right. Should she start anew? Um... I, look, I don't know what's on God's mind. It's silly to think a human being will ever know what God thinks. <laughs> All I know is I can't think of a better sign to start something fresh than this. You got replacement. Remember, Jen's got replacement coverage on her homeowners, not market value. We want replacement coverage, which is good. Her house burns down for whatever reason. You know, she's, uh, I don't want to get into too much more of her situation, but it just seems to me, it's like, what more, I mean, this seems like the inherently obvious thing to start anew. Because <sighs> time doesn't, time waits for nobody, man. Yeah, this is all you got. And I'm not saying it's to Jen, I'm saying it's to you guys, because Jen and I have already traded emails. I mean, it, it just... This is all you got. And I just, if you're making, I don't know, if you're making 250, I was talking to a guy last week or a week, I can't remember. And a good guy local, he's making bank, you know, over 200,000 a year. He's just burnt out. He's like, I'm scared. I said, no, I can't. When you're making 50 or 60, and this why I don't understand these nurses are making 50 and $60,000 a year. And they're like, I can't lose my job. Like, just get the hell out. There's all kinds of nurses that'll take it. Kim made a good point because, yeah, you might lose some of your benefits. All that. Screw all that, man. Screw off. Hell's bells. Life's too short. They're going to mandate something, a prick. You're like, no, I'm not taking it. Well, you lose your freaking benefit. You lose your uh, your PTO. Uh, okay. Sometimes sacrifice has got to be made. And so my man who's making over 200000 a year, you know, he's uh, financially... He's uh he's he's not doing badly. He's not uh, killing it. He's he's doing well, but you know it's a risk. It's a risk. But he's on the road a lot. He's just just you know thankfully he's in good health. That was good. Um, so it hasn't you know affected his you know he's not three hundred pounds. So it's not like me like dude you gotta stop this or else you're literally going to die. But I'm like man you just got one shot at this. Just try. Just try. And the worst case scenario doesn't work and you go with your head hanging back to your old job. And they say, well, we don't want you. Okay, there's job right now. There's never been a better time to try something. The jobs are everywhere. They're desperate for people to work, even middle-aged white guys making six figures. You might not be a, a making six figures when you go to your new gig, but you know, if you're making 100 and you go to 70, is that going to break the bank? Well, if it is, that's on you because you got too much debt. You put yourself in that scenario, but if you got no debt or a little bit of debt or you want to downsize and the kids are out of the house, you know, like for me, I got to say, well, I can't leave because I got the kids in school and I just don't want to do it to them again. You got five years. Let's say five years from now, YouTube bans me. They say, ah, we don't like your right wing rants. You're out of here, Josh. And PayPal banks me. You know, uh, the kids will be out. You know, hopefully the mortgage is paid off. I'll sell this sucker in two seconds flat. You know what I'm saying? And move to someplace lower and lower cost of living. I'll get a job, man. I'll do whatever I got to do to survive. The issue is, you, is if you have debt, you can't make that choice. But time doesn't wait for anybody. The best laid plans, God laughs at. It doesn't mean God's going to give you a sign like he did it to Jen here. But the facts are, you just don't know. When you're time, who was I just reading the other day? I was just reading... Um, I don't think I think about that. Who was that? In the politically incorrect guy to the Civil War, one of the generals was a Calvinist. Was it uh, Stonewall, Stonewall Jackson or was it A.P. Hill? I think it's Jackson. Hey, one of these guys, he goes, look, why are you so, why have you no, f oh, let me read that. I'm going to find it. All right here, the secret to Stonewall Jackson's courage. After the Battle of the First Manassas, Jackson was asked by Captain John Imboden, Imboden, yeah, 
It was actually in Bowdoin, I think, is a street in uh, Richmond or something like that. General, how is it that you can keep so cool and appear so utterly insensible to danger in such, in such a storm of shells and bullets as rained about your head when your hand was hit? So uh, Jackson got shot in the arm, in the, in the left pinky, and he just kept on commanding the forces to battle without even thinking about it. He says, Captain, my religious belief teaches me to feel safe as to feel as safe in battle as in bed. God fixed a time for my death. I do not concern myself about that, but to always be ready, no matter when it may overtake me. Captain, that is the way all men should live, and then all would be equally brave. Oh, man. Come on. You are one loud dog. I love you. My good thing of your mind. I might hit... Uh... Oh, I didn't hit pause. Oh, boy. All right, so that is the way all men men should live, and then all would be equally brave, thinking that God has fixed your time, and there's nothing you can do about it. Now, that obviously doesn't mean you get fat and nasty and all that. Doesn't mean you start smoking freaking crack cocaine. Doesn't mean you start shooting fentanyl in your veins. But at the end of the day, you can control you, and that is it. You can't control everything else around you. So going back to Miss Jen here, fighting the good fight, kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting. Says, look, it's all in God's hands. You don't have to be Calvinist to think this. You just got to say, I believe that God has a plan for me. I don't know what it is. And maybe I, I hurt that plan by getting on too much debt. And I'm not Calvinist. I do think there's self-determination, but maybe I hurt that plan by taking on too much debt and spending too much when I was in my 20s and 30s, now I'm in my 40s and I hate my job and I got paid back. Well, that's, you're, you wrote, you freaking made that bed. You got to lay in it. Or do like Dave Ramsey said, just eat some rice and beans. But at the end of the day, uh, my religious beliefs teaches me to feel as safe in battle as in bed because God fixed a time for my death. I will always be ready no matter what may overtake me. Oh. And so Jen's here, like, should I try something new? I'm like, I don't know if you're not going to do it now. When? When? When are you going to do it? If this doesn't work, what I, I can't remember what she wants to do. Let's just say she wants to do freaking, you know, fiddling. She wants to be a fiddler on the roof. If you can't do it now, when are you going to do it? Blessings to you, Jen. Let's pray for her. Heavenly Father, we just pray for Jen. Help her heal. We just, we thank you for her bravery, allowing us to partake in that bravery and recognize, oh my goodness, all of the pitfalls that we have to deal with, all the things we got to contend with, but just drive on knowing at the end of the day, you are in charge and you will lead us ultimately to freedom and liberation with you and Jesus in heaven. We just pray to hear those forever words that we want to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. And we'll open up the pearly gates to be with you forever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends. Um, think about it, Jen and say a prayer. All right, thanks now.